my god! Have you guys been watching what's been going on today? I cannot believe what happened today. Today has been a significant and symbolic day. I am just in shock. It's literally the implosion of the Republican Party. It's the end of the Republican Party. It's the end of Trumpism, as we know. It's the beginning of the end of Trumpism. Okay, so two major things happened today, and I'm sure probably everybody knows right now. The first thing was Bob Corker and Donald Trump got into this um, fight today, and Bob Corker basically dragged Donald Trump and obviously won again because the imposter in the White House is completely allergic to winning. He's completely allergic to winning. Okay, so anyway... And then the second thing is that Senator Jeff Flake announced today that he will not be seeking re-election and then gave this scathing speech on the Senate floor about Donald Trump. Okay, so basically what I realize right now is that this is basically the end, the beginning of the end of all of this. What basically came out of, of Bob Corker and Jeff Flake today was basically laying the foundation for them to remove Donald Trump from office. That's what they basically said today. And I'm going to get into all that later and play some of what they said. But what you heard today was basically them laying the foundation for the 25th Amendment. Everything they said about Donald Trump today was basically that he is unfit to be the president of the United States. And the reality is he's not even attacking like Democrats, right? He's attacking his own party, the people that he needs to be able to push his agenda. Like today, let me read some of the stuff that he was saying to Bob Corker. Okay, so here's the imposter in the White House. The first tweet. Bob Corker, who helped President O give us the bad Iran deal and couldn't get elected dog catcher in Tennessee, is now fighting tax cuts. Okay, you buffoon. You full-fledged buffoon. He's elected senator. He's been elected senator more than once. He can clearly get elected to something and dog catchers don't get elected, you, oh, you incompetent ass. How are you the president of the United States? But anyway, then here's the next week. Corker dropped out of the race in Tennessee when I refused to endorse him. And now he's only negative on anything Trump. Look at his record. First of all, why are you speaking in third person? We all know you're sick, right? We already know there is a psychiatric disorder. But why are you speaking in third person? Okay, you are Trump. Do we need to remind you of who you are? That's why I said if they didn't have his name on buildings, I don't even think this guy would know who he is. But this is the thing. Bob Corker has a 56% approval rating, roughly around there, um, in Tennessee. Donald Trump has lost 23 points in Tennessee since he has been elected. Okay, Donald Trump has a 36% approval rating in the United States of America. I think the last person that Bob Corker would want to align himself with is the imposter in the White House. Because we all know the imposter in the White House is a failure. Look what happened to Luther Strange in an Alabama primary. Alabama primary. Not the general election, an Alabama primary. Donald Trump, the candidate he supported, wasn't even able to get him over the finish line. And look who he lost to. Some cuckoo that was standing on the stage with a cowboy hat and pulled out a gun in front of his crowd. That's who the guy Donald Trump supported. So I think Bob Corker is better off not supporting, having Donald Trump support him. Okay, then here's another thing he writes. It is sad that lightweight... Senator Bob Corker, who couldn't get reelected in the great state of Tennessee, will now fight tax cuts plus. Okay, first, you already said something about him fighting tax cuts. You're saying it again. Like, dementia, dementia. Okay, so clearly something's wrong with you. But the truth is, you are the one that will never get reelected. The person who has a chance between the two of them to get reelected would be Bob Corker. It would never be Donald Trump. Donald Trump is never going to get reelected because I doubt sincerely, that he finishes his entire term. I've already said there's three things that are, one of the three things are going to happen. He's either going to resign, it's going to be the 25th Amendment, or he's going to be impeached. So the reality is for that incompetent buffoon in the White House, he needs to understand that he's the one that won't be getting reelected. Nobody wants to align themselves with you. You are the plague. Okay, so then he says, again, because he could not stop tweeting about Bob Corker. Literally, this guy does nothing all day but tweet. And you know what, honestly? Please just keep tweeting and don't try to do anything else because you are so reckless. Can't they just put you in a room with like a playpen and let you play? I mean, Jesus. Okay, so anyway, so he writes again. Senator Corker is the incompetent head of Foreign Relations Committee. And look how poorly the U.S. has done. He doesn't have a clue as... Okay, so he doesn't know how to do ellipses. You know, the three dots. So he just puts all these dots at the end. Anyway, so then he writes another tweet. Our stalker president, basically, who's stalking Bob Corker right now at this point. He writes... 
The entire world was laughing and taking advantage of us. People like little Bob Corker have set the U.S. way back. Now we move forward. First of all, who the fuck is we? <laughs> You're on your own, homie. Oh, you got told that today. We, there is no we. It is you. You are on your own. And the world is laughing at us, but it's not because of Bob Corker. The world is laughing at us because we have a baboon in the White House. That is you. That is you. Okay? So anyway, he goes on and on and on about Bob Corker all day. And then Bob Corker um, drags him right back and basically says um, that, you know, he basically writes a tweet back and he says something like, um, you know, another, you know, bunch of lies from the utterly untruthful president. And then he writes something like, um, um, where is the daycare staff or something like that in the tweet. It was so funny. But then he does an interview with Manu Raju from CNN. And he just lights Donald Trump up, lights him up, okay? So he just legitimately lights him up in this interview. So I'm going to play um, part of the interview from Bob Corker and part of what Bob Corker says, and then I'm going to tell you guys what I think after that. Okay, here it is. The president uh, has great difficulty with the truth on many issues. He's proven himself uh, unable to rise to the occasion. I think many of us, me, me included, have you know tried to... You know, I've intervened, I've had private dinner, I've you know, been with him on multiple occasions to try to you know, create some kind of aspirational uh, uh, approach, if you will, to the way that he conducts himself. But uh, I don't think that that's possible, and um, I, he's obviously not going to, to rise to the occasion as president. But I think at the end of the day, when his term is over, I think the debasing of our nation um, the constant non-truth telling, the just the, the name calling, the things like I think the the basement of our nation will be what he'll be remembered most for, and, and that's regretful, um, um, and it affects young people. I mean, we have young people who, for the first time, are you know watching a president uh, stating uh, you know absolute non-truths uh, nonstop. Um, personalizing things in the way that he does and and it's uh it's it's very sad for me okay okay first of all wow okay first of all what he basically said and threw out there was donald trump is a liar a pathological serial liar all he does is tell untruths but there was something he said that i thought was so significant he said at the end of his term what he'll be remembered for is debasing the nation for debasing the nation nation that's what he's going to be remembered for is for debasement but another thing he said i think was the, the in, in part of that what he just said that sentence right there is term that's singular that's not plural now it's one thing if you thought that he was going to get two terms right he'd be a two-term president right you could say whatever if you thought he was going to get terms right he get one term and then another term you would say at the end of his presidency, he, you know, this is what he's going to be remembered as. Bob Corker knows that Donald Trump is not going to get two terms because he's not going to last an entire term. That's what Bob Corker was saying there. And that made me feel really, really good. But there's some more that Bob Corker said as he was dragging Donald Trump like a sled. Here it is. Um, I, he's obviously not going to, to rise to the occasion as president. Do you think he's a role model to children in the United States? No. You don't? No, absolutely not. I think that, you know, the things that are happening right now that are that are harmful to our nation, um, whether it's the breaking down of we're going to be doing some hearings on some of the things that he purposely is breaking down relationships we have around the world that have been useful to our nation. But I think at the end of the day, when his term is over. I OK, first of all, first, he says. I do not think he's a role model. When Manu Raju asked him, do you think he's a role model? He's like, no. Like, didn't even take him a second. No, absolutely not. Okay. But the second thing that he said that I thought was so important was the fact that they're actually going to be investigating the fact that Donald Trump is breaking down relationships that, that the United States has built around the world, which means the Republican Party is going to be investigating Donald Trump for his failure as a president. That is what he's saying. We're going to be investigating him for deliberately doing these things. Think about that. Okay, so that was Bob Corker today, which was just wow. Okay, so then Jeff Flake. 
I'm going to need to preface a few things about Jeff Flake before I get into what Jeff Flake did today. First of all, Jeff Flake, what he did was so courageous. And let me tell you guys why I think it's courageous. Because a lot of times people think, oh, it's not necessarily courageous because you're doing what you should have done. No. This guy just literally gave up his job for the purposes of saving the soul of democracy. That's what he did. That's noble and courageous. Another thing, too, the mainstream thirsty media is basically trying to make it seem like the reason why he did it is because he wouldn't win re-election. The thing is, yes, his poll numbers are not good, and he wasn't looking very good. But that's not the reason why he did it solely. I mean, because what he realized was that in order for him to try to win, try to win back at least even some of Trump's base— and then still trying to get the rest of Arizona that can't stand Donald Trump would be too hard to do. And that would require him to basically try to pivot towards Donald Trump, lose the election anyway, and then sell your, sell your morality and your soul in the process. He was not willing to do that. He was not willing to sell his morality, his soul, his principles any longer for Donald Trump. And he couldn't take it anymore. He legitimately could not take it anymore. But he gave one of the most epic speeches I've ever heard by, from a Republican, ever. He's going to go down in history. And I need to make sure I say this abundantly clear. I don't have to agree with his politics at all. And I don't. The Republicans made their bed. They have to lay in it. You let an imposter into your party platform. These are the consequences of it. Now you guys are trying to get rid of him, but this is what you guys caused. You should have never let this guy run your platform. So I disagree with Republicans a lot. But it does not mean that I'm not going to respect what somebody does when they stand on principle. I will always respect somebody who's principled. And what he did here was so principled. And I have so much respect for it. So I'm going to play part of what he said here. I just, it's, it's epic. Here it is. The personal attacks, the threats against principles, freedoms and institution, the flagrant disregard for truth and decency the reckless provocations, most often for the pettiest and most personal reasons, reasons having nothing whatsoever to do with the fortunes of the people that we have been elected to serve. None of these appalling features of our current politics should ever be regarded as normal. It must also be said that I rise today with no small measure of regret. Regret because of the state of our disunion. Regret because of the disrepair and destructiveness of our politics. Regret because of the indecency of our discourse. Regret because of the coarseness of our leadership. Regret for the compromise of our moral authority. And by our, I mean all of our, complicity in this alarming and dangerous state of affairs. It is time for our complicity and our accommodation of the unacceptable to end. We must stop pretending that the de degradation of our politics and the conduct of some in our executive branch are normal. They are not normal. Reckless, outrageous, and undignified behavior has become excused and countenanced as telling it like it is when it is actually just reckless, outrageous, and, and undignified. And when such behavior emanates from the top of our government, it is something else. It is dangerous to a democracy. Such behavior does not project strength because our strength comes from our values. It instead projects a corruption of the spirit and weakness. Sustained incumbency is certainly not the point of seeking office, and there are times when we must risk our careers in favor of our principles. Now is such a time. Oh my God. Like, first of all, that speech was so good. I mean, he literally, it was eloquently delivered, but it was so true. Everything he said, everything is crumbling. The foundations of everything in the United States are crumbling. This guy is literally a wrecking ball. He's destroying everything, the, the fabric of this country. He's just destroying it. And people are letting this outrageous conduct and this ridiculousness and pretending as though he says it like it is. That's not what's happening. But what Jeff Flake basically did today was lay the foundation with Bob Corker for the 25th Amendment. That's what they did. If he's not impeached, he's gonna, they're going to invoke the 25th Amendment. The reality is what Bob Corker basically said is, ah, we've gone and tried to help him. 
We've tried to change him. We've tried to contain him. He can't rise to the occasion. If he can't rise to the occasion, then he cannot be president of the United States. That's the purpose of the 25th Amendment. And Bob Corker is publicly saying that in interview after interview after interview because they're trying to um, let the public understand what they're about to do next. And then here comes Jeff Flake saying, I'm not even going to seek re-election. People are running from the Republican Party right now, literally running from it. Look at Jason Chaffetz. Jason Chaffetz didn't even finish his entire term. He was like, yo, I'm out. I'm resigning. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay? He ran. And the thing is, one thing I can definitely say is that these guys afterwards, Bob Corker, Jason Chaffetz, um, Jeff Flake, all those guys will be fine. They're going to make more money when they get out of the um, public sector, when they get into the private, private sector. They're going to make way more money in the private sector. And these guys are going to go down. In history, on the right side of history, you can dislike their politics, but what you can, what you cannot dislike, is the fact that, that what they did is something you agree with. You agree with what they said. You agree with what they're doing. If you don't like Trump, and if you think that Trump is a threat to this country, then you also are very happy about what they said. The reality is, there is nothing left for Trump. He's done. The Republican Party's done. Trumpism is done. And this is what they're doing. They're trying to destroy Trumpism. Destroy it. By showing everybody, like, look, we are not going to be controlled by, by Donald Trump. These guys are sacrificing their careers to be the backbone for the Republican Party. Even though, I mean, they will do better when they get out of um, the Senate. But they are sacrificing their careers at this time. That power that they have as senator, they're sacrificing that in order to preserve democracy. If you don't think that's nobility, then... You know, you're not going to really respect a lot of things. So, but the most important thing, my major takeaway from this is that Trump is done. He's done. His presidency is over. He's a lame duck, a complete and total lame duck. They're going to destroy Trumpism and they're going to destroy Trump in the process. Trust me. That's what's happening right now. They're laying the foundation for the 25th Amendment. They laid out every single reason why he should not be the president of the United States. And Jeff Flake came back later in interviews and said, you know, he's not talking about the 25th Amendment. He's not, that's not his position and stuff like that. That's horseshit. If you heard every single thing that he said, he's, they're laying the foundation for impeachment. I mean, excuse me, the 25th Amendment. They obviously can't say that right now. That's not tactical. They have to look like this is just them trying to do the right thing. But they want him gone. They probably think about impeachment more than Democrats think about impeachment. Probably ten times more. Because he's destroying the Republican Party. He's ended the Republican Party. It's no longer... Right now, they're trying to figure out how do they get back to Republicanism. Right? How do we even get back to that? It's going to take them decades to get back there. Because the problem with Trumpism is that it's incoherent and irrational. There's no consistency in, in, in Trumpism. And so the thing is, they don't want to be a part of this mania anymore. And they're not going to let him just destroy the country. They're going to investigate him now, which is what Bob Corker's saying. They're saying the guy is unfit. We've tried our best. We can't, he can't do it. He, he just can't do the job. If he can't do the job, you have to remove him. So like I've said for a long time, he's gone. He's just too stupid to know it. 